So yeah, getting this thing started. How would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, can you give us a little bit of your background? Magician, mind <laughs> magician. <laughs> ah, I like it. No, I am a formally trained mindfulness teacher and master NLP coach. So when I say mind mag magician, it's more uh, neuro-linguistic programming. So really, there is a consideration on helping someone respectfully shift beliefs, which is, I think, very high level work. It has to be done correctly. Mm. And then there's the mindfulness teacher that uh, is also there. So. Yeah, just helping people have a better experience with a lot less struggle or setback. And mm. it's the combination of those two things that um, help set someone up for even better success. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Yeah, that is the essence of magic. At least how they describe magic with a K. It's all about your belief, mm -hmm. right? And is that mm -hmm. what you do is you sort of change people's belief systems in themselves? And then that yes. changes up their life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what I find interesting is online, just doing research and YouTube and, and seeing how other people do it. So if you could imagine a triangle, at least how I work, at the very top of the triangle, uh, there's the belief and identity. And those two things, they kind of work together almost like a figure eight. And from that, dictates one's experience in life, capabilities, feelings, emotions, thoughts. So it's almost like if we can just focus on what I call as meta. So if we can do the shifting in the belief and identity territory, everything else, I wouldn't say it's easier, but it's a lot easier. So rather than trying to change behavior, it's focusing on well, what are the beliefs that are gener generating the behavior in the first place. And so uh -huh. if we can just focus on that, so it's like focusing on the 5% of things that have 95% power. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's super cool. I feel like mm -hmm. a magician, <laughs> mm -hmm. quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty great stuff. <laughs> Sounds like it. So yeah, how yeah. we start along that path to be able to see it, right? To see our unconscious beliefs, would you say is the essence of mindfulness and meditation? That's a good question. Well, what's interesting about beliefs is most beliefs are, un are unconscious. They're being, you know, they're imprinted in the unconscious mind. So it's just kind of how we know life to be. You know, if you could think of someone in their experience with money, maybe they don't have enough money or they spend money in really funky ways. That experience for them is just, it's just what they know to be true. It could not work for them. So in terms of mindfulness and beliefs, I actually think the two, and this this is probably maybe going to sound kind of funny, but they almost contradict each other, which as, a, as the practitioner that I am, I've had to figure out a way to do this super heady kind of scientific work, but how is it to actually work with the human being and the heart that's having the experience with the mind? So I don't know if that makes sense, but it's almost like really two different things and the deeper I've gone into the world of neurolinguistic programming and belief change, it's actually been shown to me or proven to me by clients and community that it's the heart stuff that we have to start with and where I have to start with. Um, and just helping people feel like they're like, it's just okay to be as you are, however messed up or awesome or twist, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I think that's probably the first place that I like to start with people is rationalizing the human experience. And that's more of the mindfulness teacher. And, and then we can move on into this really technical heady stuff. So it's like the head and the heart. And sometimes they don't, it doesn't actually match up. Does that make sense? I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, so it's kind of a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my French. I don't know if I should say that on your podcast, but no, I feel you. It's uh can be seen as a shit show until <laughs> we see it as a shit show and we start to clean up the shit you could say in one's life right. um, to have a better show <laughs> yeah to have exactly so it's not a shit show anymore <laughs> very well said <laughs> so um yeah what do you mean by the heart stuff uh what is the heart stuff that we work with is, is that like getting more in tune with our emotions uh how yes. would you describe the heart stuff 
Yes, I would say that's partly it. I would say it's, oof. you know, it's interesting is I'm kind of overhauling the work that I do. So I've gone way deep into the science and NLP and belief change and identity. And I'm kind of coming back more to this heart forward intelligence. Mm. It's, and this is just a personal belief that our heart is the heart of the universe. Your heart is the heart of the universe. So if you were someone who were like, hey, Ash, I want to be more intuitive. I want to have a better sense about me as to how I can move through the world and just be more mindful or be more intuitive. That comes here. That's, that's heart. That's heart intelligence. Head stuff is, I mean, that's, that's the wiring that we, so, so, I mean, a quick, uh, beliefs are imprinted from zero to three. And so most humans are walking around with really outdated programming, oh, really yeah. outdated. And it, I often laugh, it's with compassion, but I often walk around and laugh just like, how is it that we actually can function as a species and do anything of real value? Because this thing is ancient. We have ancient wiring. So, so in terms of heart intelligence, that's more of the in intuitive sensible not that the brain isn't sensible right it's just heart intelligence is different mind intelligence is i just think there's a lot of really old programming running that should be updated and could be updated whereas this thing the heart is just it's a, it's a different well i mean i don't know like what's your experience in terms of intuition it doesn't usually come from the head, does it? It's not like you like you have a sense about it. You can feel. You're like, oh, I feel that. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. And okay. then the head comes in and will say something. Will judge, or right. might say you're wrong, but... or talk you out of it, or yeah, yeah. Right. So these are the conflicting things that I think that we all possess as human beings that can make life really tricky, especially the the programming that we have. I think of it like a just like a smartphone. Your smartphone or your device has to update. Our brains have a very similar but different um, way in which it has to be updated. Like there's neurological patterning that does not update on its own. And so if it doesn't update on its own, it's just running software that was basically laid down your belief structure. When you were zero to three, you picked up you know, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about the world. So it's, mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think when we can combine the two, but lead with the heart, whoa, yep. super powerful, mm -hmm. super powerful. So that's, that's the territory that I try to work in most is got to lead with the heart because it's everything, but Amen. let's, thank you. I'm so glad that <laughs> I can have a conversation with someone whom you know, can, can feel that for themselves and how your life probably is as a result of you being able to say, you know what? Amen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Lead with the heart and the mind I mean, becomes the servant. Can you imagine like what the world would look like if oh. we had the capability or the understanding as to how to actually do that? Oh, oh it wouldn't look like how it looks now. That's for sure. Oh, that's right. That's like totally agree. I think it would be like an alien world if we actually all were aligned with this so-called heart intelligence. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine like what could be possible? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's where I kind of, my brain starts to crash where I am like that. That's, that's, it's very real. Yeah. It's like one of the strongest beliefs I have is your heart is the heart of the universe. If you wanted to know what your intuition sounded like, it sounds like your own voice. Mm. so how is it that we access that more that's i think in the mindfulness and the meditation practice is cultivating and making time and space for that to be available and mm. then that can start to guide and even override you know the mind intelligence yeah. i don't know if that makes sense but it it's a very sense. strong personal belief yeah cool definitely. but even if it didn't make sense or you didn't agree with it you i already would said. welcome that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i would welcome that too because it's just a conversation <laughs> yeah um it really is that simple just meditate and one will feel the heart intelligence just come forth and flourish in their life it's that simple um i don't know how else to put it i mean i don't really have anything else to say about that mm -hmm. it's just it's natural we 
personally speaking, I start to realize or have realized that this heart intelligence is, um, how do I put this? It's like primary. It's, it's, uh, comes before the mind, you could say. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's the mind of the mind <laughs> in a way, mm -hmm. another way to put it. And it's not like you just kind of get in tune with it and it will lead the way in all endeavors in your life. And mm -hmm. that's it. And I think it looks different for everybody else. Like the actual practice of getting in touch mm -hmm. can be similar with meditation, but I think how it comes about in everyone's circumstance, everyone's dharma is different. And that's what makes life beautiful is we all have a different way of dancing with the heart, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so meditation will definitely lead the way, but the way that I and you uh, reflect with your heart intelligence will look different. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, Jesus, he had, he reflected with his heart intelligence. You could definitely say he was, he was the epitome of that Buddha as mm -hmm. well, but they have different ways of, of um, different ways that it looks in their life, you know, different Dharma, I think I already mm -hmm. said. So yeah. yeah, but when you, when you tap in, you just know, there's just this subtle knowing of mm -hmm. like, yep, ah, that's it. Of course. There's this like sense of, of course. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh God, and you get lost <laughs> in the mind stuff. I'm like, oh, of course it's about the heart. It may sound corny and cliche, and I've said it plenty of times in all of my podcasts, but it really does, love really does lead the way. Um, um I, let's be as corny as you want to be or as you can be. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And, and this is coming from someone, so for 15 years, this has been my professional lifeline. Like I've worked with, and I'm not saying this to be bombastic, but I, clients have been a practice of study, like trying things, testing things, and having gone from super heart forward mindfulness, modern mindfulness, like you don't need to sit on an ashram unless you want to, to access the same thing that we're talking about, and then swinging all the way to the other like highly technical neuro stuff. It's, I, I really do feel as corny as it sounds that love is the, I mean, it is the solution. It is the invitation. Mm -hmm. It is the, I, I feel ridiculous saying this, but like it's, it, it is, I really do believe it, it is the, it is the way forward. Yeah. Yep. I really do believe so. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're only 15 minutes in and we're already at that point. <laughs> you, <laughs> usually it takes a little longer for me to get to that. But, Not yeah. my world. <laughs> <laughs> it is a solution. And um, man, it's so simple. It's so simple. But why? So I have a question for you. and not. I'm not trying to hijack your podcast. So it's okay. if it's so simple, why, why do we struggle? And this is just human mm. to human. You know, like I have my own struggles every day. I struggle with my own crap. Like if it's so simple, why, why is it, why is it that we struggle the way that we do? Uh, actually, I'm answering my own question as I, as I say it. It's, I think it's largely just how powerful and ancient at the same time that the, the human brain actually is. It's mm -hmm. super sophisticated and super ancient at the same time. But anyway, I asked you a question, so I'd, I would actually love to hear your own wisdom <laughs> so why do we struggle to retain this wavelength of knowing that love is the truth in our life yeah um, yeah yeah that's Help a me. deep one that's a big one <laughs> yeah. well i think it's where we came from you know some say love is god so we came from love and we uh we fell from grace you could say into our separateness in the human form through evolution we we kind of forgot you could say through our evolution through thousands millions of years we forgot our um our origin we evolved and the mind evolved out of that into some kind of separation consciousness you know mm -hmm. um just through survival instincts just through our needs to survive as a separate organism and we got to the point of where we are today, which is the same point where we were thousands of years ago, which is the hunter-gatherers. We still have that same biology, 
as in we created fears to survive, like these fear mechanisms of tigers or mm -hmm. scarcity of food or just just general survival. We developed that in our brain and those are still there. There's still, we still share the same biology as those people. But now we have different tigers. We have different things that we fear. We have different stuff that we think is gonna kill us essentially, but it's really not. So I feel like I'm getting lost here. <laughs> So we, we built up, we, we evolved in a certain kind of way to survive, which was needed. Like we needed to become the human that we are. But it only got so far, it kind of only got so far as the mind, as in like we built up the mind to a certain point and it reached its limit. And the mind now is kind of almost reaching a point of self-destruction because of the evolutionary patterns of the past. So now the path, it seems, the spiritual path, is to sort of undo the workings of the past and become mm -hmm. more integrated with our origin point, which is the heart. Mm -hmm. And that is the next stage in our evolution, is the integration between the mind, which was mm -hmm. needed, which is how we evolved over thousands or millions of years, and coming back into where we came from. And then I think, who knows where we go from that? Um, nobody knows, you know, it'd be incredibly novel when we are fully integrated with the heart, but also retain the intelligence that we built up mm -hmm. over those years. Um, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, what was your, I don't even remember what your original question was, <laughs> to be honest. I don't actually. Uh, why, why, is, why does love become complicated oh, okay, or yeah. something? something so like I, that. I think that answered it. I think we just, we've come so far and we needed to evolve to a certain stage, which we did. And the game, you could say, the game of the human experience at this point is to be able to remember remember love, which is what we really are. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, we have to sort of deal with the goings on of the mind. And why is that? You know, like, why did we evolve to be that way? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I can't answer that question. You know, like, why couldn't we just stay in love the whole time? Right, mm -hmm. you could say. <laughs> I almost think, I was actually talking to someone the other day, a family member who is very one-sided it's this or nothing else and i was like well if you don't have something to bounce back on if it can't be yes and how do you actually learn right mm -hmm. so because she's blood love her she's amazing and highly into and whatever but i think sometimes we need that opposite to run into and push back on yeah. or how else would we how else would we learn and grow if we didn't have something to push back on and I so agree. i wonder if you know, just this conversation around like, how do we fall so far from this state of being, you know, this heart intelligence, I think it's, and no shame on the mind, like, who are we as a result of having a very intelligent human brain, but I don't know, I think, I think we need something to push back on so that mm -hmm. we learn and that we grow or we have the option, not everyone will choose that, but that we, yeah. we, we have, have that option. available. Yeah, yeah, we have the opportunity. Exactly. Totally. And isn't that such a miracle when that is bestowed upon you and that revelation comes in that love is the truth, not fear, not separation, not competition, contrary to popular belief, but yeah. love is actually the truth. So if we were mm -hmm. always in that all the time and we didn't get to forget, it wouldn't be so like, oh my God, it wouldn't, you know, it would be, yeah. so the forgetting is actually part of the miracle, I feel as though. Absolutely. I do. I do agree. Um, I think life is too perfect to be fair. Life you know, if we lived, to be fair. if we lived in this yeah. state of pure love yeah. consciousness or whatever, all the time, again, what would we miss out on? How would we not develop as a human if we didn't have stuff to push back on, if mm -hmm. we didn't encounter fear, if we didn't, you know, if we didn't have to deal with all that stuff, mm -hmm. I think 
I think life is, I think life is, um, life is smart. <laughs> now <laughs> this was all created. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Life is too perfect to be fair. <laughs> Some people might really push back on that, but I get it's it. something I've, it's something I've been, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's just something that I've been chewing on lately is, uh, because if everything was right and fair, you know, what experiences would we be missing out on as as a human? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like complete I, fairness, right? You just think like try to just, idea yeah. of complete fairness. That's so Perfection, bland. fairness, fill in yeah. whatever adjective of perfection or wholeness or and of course, I mean, I would want the world to have that collective experience, this heart intelligence, love, peace, all that stuff, but uh that's not that's not my call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't get to choose that. Um, mm -hmm. I get to choose how I react within it, but I don't get to choose the unfoldment, like how this all unfolds. And mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't choose a lot of things going on in the world right now. No. Oh, this is a powerful talk. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go from here. <sighs> I think we should come back down here. To ground ourselves right. a little bit um <laughs> yeah i mean i don't even know where to go from how did you get on this wavelength did this all just start through meditation for you uh you know uh, what got you involved with this yeah. uh, way of seeing yourself in the world when i was 10 a primary family member one of my you know was having an extremely difficult time in life and I had a choice. So I grew up in Miami, Florida, and I was really struggling with how to process this as a 10 year old. And I I'll never forget the day my father took me to like a yard sale. And I was just looking at the books and I found this Shivananda yoga book. And I was like, what's that? And I was a gymnast. So I was looking at the poses and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I could do that. So my dad bought me the book. It was $1 took it home but in the very very back of the book there was a small section I, I wish I had the book I still own it there was a very small section on meditating and so it was a moment in my life where the path was chosen for me it was kind of a split it was the Shivananda yoga book being a gymnast trying to do these poses but really it was an invitation for salvation in mm -hmm. some regards mm -hmm. or it was a cocaine party scene late 80s early 90s in miami and so mm. i don't know how much choice i actually had but I, the path was chosen and i started meditating and doing yoga and that kind of led into one thing and then another thing and so it was through real challenge as a very young person trying to deal with things that i don't actually think i'm not going to sh share the story it's not my story to share but I was having to deal with things that a 10 year old in my hope would not have to deal with like yeah. stuff that I was processing. That was just way bigger than my capability as a 10 year old. So I'm actually extremely grateful for that moment, for that book, for yoga, for I actually don't even do yoga anymore. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing yoga. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was, uh, no, I don't really, I don't really know other than it was time and space for me to just process what I was going through as a little girl. And then that developed and developed. And, you know, I, so yeah, that's what kind of set me on the path, challenge, adversity, the harshness of life, you know, the yeah. possibility of losing a parent. And mm. it was, it was, it was tough. It was super tough. So yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I think just a curiosity about, you know, and I think, I don't, I don't actually really know my fa a lot of my family members are highly intuitive. And so like my sisters, my grandma, my mom. So there's always been this awareness or, as to what could be possible. Yeah. I always grew up thinking that I didn't have the magic, you know, oh, like yeah. I didn't have it in me. Everyone else had it, but I didn't have it. So I think meditation and mindfulness was an invitation for me in my own way to start to explore something that something else that could be possible. Mm -hmm. So you started this at 10 years of. old. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Impressive. Again, I didn't, I, I, I was just a 10 year old trying to process life and yeah. hardship. And, um, 
I really, I really do feel it was, it was, it was the chosen path. Yeah. Yeah. Would I have chosen this? Like now as an adult, having gone into the depths of spirituality and mindfulness and meditation, but just the reality of being human, the challenges yeah. and the death and grief, all this stuff, the rainbow of emotions that we get to experience. Like, would I have chosen this path? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> it's, I think, you know, in talking about heart intelligence, I think leading one's life from, and this is just a personal belief, but leading from the heart or living from the heart takes tremendous courage. It takes a mm -hmm. ton of courage mm -hmm. to face what hurts or to face what isn't working or to face whatever. And um, there are days, actually yesterday I was like, I'm over this. I'm done. Like this whole thing can go stop. I'm just out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was a tough day. And so uh, in preparation of the podcast, I was actually like, you know, would I have chosen this path? No, I don't think so. Like, is mm. it easier to just be <laughs> asleep and go through life and mm. go through the emotions? Like, is that easier than being just a conscious person wanting to be a good person and experiencing all the stuff that you would then experience as a conscious person? Yeah. I don't know which is easier or more difficult, but Sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to jump ship. I'm going to go that way. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, like the ignorance is bliss path. Yeah. Like seems to work for quite a few people. <laughs> seems Maybe like I it. Seems like it. Yeah. Seems mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what kind of started the whole thing. <laughs> mm some some calling and i i'm curious what you think but i think a lot of people have the calling i don't know how many people accept the calling ah that's been my experience wow i think all of us have the calling mm -hmm. always but will we accept it will mm. we actually say i mean if you think about some of the greatest movies like star wars and and i mean that's that's the classic hero's journey it starts with the calling Everyone may have the calling, but I think a lot of people refuse the calling for whatever reasons, but it's, I think it's available for all of us. And I think a lot of people right now are probably feeling it pretty intensely. Yeah. A need or desire to choose something different, to have a different experience, to have a different life, to choose again. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people you have these conversations with, but I'd be curious how many people actually have the calling right now. I think it's... Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty high. Oh, I think it's, it's pretty high. high. Yeah. yeah. And the calling I feel is though, it's calling back to the heart. It's your heart calling you mm -hmm. back. And right. uh, it comes from suffering. That's mm -hmm. what all the sages say. It comes from us reaching a point of being like, there's got to be another way. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm surprised it happened to you at 10 years old. And that leads me to believe in past lifetimes, like stuff like that. Most people that I speak to, it's usually in adulthood, mm -hmm. to be honest. Usually this stuff happens and they get on this path, this wavelength of meditation, yoga. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mid-20s, 30s, even older. So, yeah, 10 years old to me. is that's, that's, I was not on that. I was playing video games. I don't even know what I was doing at 10 years old, to be honest. <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was environment. You know, my environment really influenced. Yeah. I grew up in Miami, Florida. Yeah. Like most of the girls in my high school had already gone through full facelifts. And wow. you know what I mean? By the time high school graduation came around. So I yeah. think I was pretty sensitive to what was going on around me. And mm. I just, I wasn't into it. You yeah. know? I think just as the heart is natural, that wavelength of i don't even know what you want to call it the paradigm of the western world of glamour of trying mm -hmm. to find happiness in material things hedonism maybe you could say i think mm -hmm. naturally that wavelength brings us suffering i think just as natural as the heart is trying to pull us in there's that wavelength that is trying to push us away but for some reason, we're like masochists. Like we don't want to mm -hmm. go back to the heart. You know, we don't want to take the red pill. Yeah. And that's scary why, like, why is that most scary? Most people. Well, 
I mean, is that a correct? Should I try and answer that question? <laughs> yeah, you first, and then maybe I'll try and answer. <laughs> I I think well, I think matters of the heart require feeling, which requires vulnerability, which could be a compromise of safety. So I think yeah, yeah. Like I think if we chunk it down, maybe one of the the primary concerns, and I don't think that this is conscious behavior. I think this is just how humans are, how, how we function in kind of a ancient sort of animal way is mm -hmm. safety is number one concern, especially yeah. for a part of the brain. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's safety, vulnerability, the, like living from the heart or just engaging in that way, this heart intelligence. Now that requires a ton of vulnerability mm -hmm. with yourself, with the people you love, with the people you don't love. Like you got to show up and face life. And usually that doesn't actually feel good. That's been my experience. It doesn't actually feel good. It's scary. And, and yet, um, sometimes we have to do things that may not feel good and that are scary. Mm -hmm. That's been my experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Safety. And that's how I lead. Like you got to face this stuff that I call it the icky, sticky, hairy, scary stuff. Like <laughs> you got to face it. You got to, you got to, you can't tow around it as if it doesn't exist. And it's all light and love. I'm all about light and love, but I think there's a reality that, I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a reality that we get to experience of, as humans having both a brain and a heart and yeah. just everything that we're, yeah. I don't know if that answered the question, but. Yeah, it definitely answered the question. Yes. Because of safety, it's a false sense of safety. Mm -hmm. it's because as I went on my tangent a little while ago, it's how we developed. And what did you say at the age of three, right? That's when the... So there's the the amygdala. I call it critter brain. It's kind of street term, but it's the oldest part of the brain that is solely focused on survival. Quantity of life, mm -hmm. not quality. Quality is the prefrontal cortex. So... Uh, from utero, from the day we're conceived till about three, sometimes six, that's when our that's when the the amygdala, this critter brain, is just being imprinted. So anything that is going on within you, without you, this is the stuff that creates the your relief architecture, what you believe about yourself and what you believe about the world. And that critter brain, anything outside of known, so whatever you had going on from zero to three, anything outside of that considers it a threat so it's yeah we call it critter brain neurology it's like survival patterning so from that perspective you know maybe the more scientific neuroscientific perspective it is all about safety because the brain do we have a heartbeat do we have a breath that's the only thing it cares yeah. about doesn't care about podcasts doesn't care about oprah doesn't care about chakras crystals a line doesn't care about are we alive? Do we have heartbreak? Yes, yes or no, that's it. So it's yeah. quantity of life. It's not quality of life. So, yeah. you know, where I go and having these pretty deep conversations is, um, yeah, safety is a large part of, safety is a large part of it. And it's so fundamental. Again, if we were to think about the smartphone, if we don't update that, it's running really old safety patterning. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So why is love hard? Why is life hard? Why is change hard? Our brains do not like it. Even good change. The brain is like, I'm not interested. I don't know if you can survive that. So I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yep. procrastinate. Let's produce the experience of fear. Like avoid that. It's quite literally the brain just like, I'm not sure I can keep you alive. So I don't want you doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's just go do this thing that we know really well, even though it might be really horrible and painful. <laughs> we know that we can survive that. So let's just go keep doing that. Yep. And that's where most people get stuck. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's very fascinating. I yeah. always say to clients or just, you know, when I'm in the world doing this kind of stuff that it's all workable. It's all revisable. Like if something's not working for you or if there's a pattern running that is so outdated and so limiting to your truest expression or experience, like we have the tools and the capabilities to respectfully respect. I always have to say that respectfully because you don't kill fear. Mm. Anyone who says kill fear, I 
I would like to have a conversation with them because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> fear is being generated from this part of your brain that is solely trying to keep you alive. So why would you kill that? Because you don't understand it because you yeah. don't know how to work with it. You know what I mean? So it's, mm-hmm. I'm kind of on a tangent with this, but I think safety is, is yeah, it's, it's often why we can't have the next thing or the life that we really want because our brain won't let us quite literally. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So essentially until I come in. Until you come in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the magic wizard stuff that we get to do. Mm. Mhm. Seriously. It is like magic. It is. Yeah. Um So essentially those safety mechanisms create limits of how we think, how we feel because mm-hmm. um doesn't want to break out of the the rituals right doesn't want to break out of the old patterns that we sewed for ourselves and then mm-hmm. that creates limits for our life altogether right mm-hmm. it puts like um functioning at that level it puts like a what is what am I, what's the word i'm looking for like a cap it puts a cap mm-hmm. on our potential essentially and Mm -hmm. if we don't work through that our old patterns then we're just going to keep being in the cycle essentially right the cycle of suffering same patterns same habits same just fear mechanism running the show um but the thing is you're saying work with the fear absolutely make the fear your best friend understand the Absolutely. fear and then yes. that's where the magic comes in you can sort of like yes. use that energy to transcend. but here's the thing Go ahead. yeah here's the thing gary if as not if as we work with fear at the subconscious level right working to repattern and reprogram the brain it doesn't require conscious effort there anymore right so so meaning most of the limitations and the fear-based stuff that we have baked into our neurology gets it can be revised at the subconscious level this may sound this is probably way too technical but when we do it at the subconscious level it doesn't require then for you or for me to actually have willpower i'm not like manifesting my way to feel courageous i'm not willing my way to feel courageous like we just we can revise the program and the patterning in the brain so that it becomes an effortless experience. It's not something that you actually have to think about. Mm-hmm. So that's that's like the real magic of this specifically is you then don't have to work so hard. Mm-hmm. You being everyone listening and sure you, my new friend Gary, but it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, like it, it, I think that limitation and that cap that you were just talking about there is a way to break through that Mm -hmm. that doesn't require so much willpower which i think is one of the most miraculous things available available to us is that we can change the stuff that creates that limitation and that ceiling i don't need your vision board i don't need a thousand mantras unless you want to say them but like i don't need that for you to have the change that you want the long-term lasting change if you want to say mantras until you're blue in the face, I love it. Go for it. But that's not required. Does that make sense? And yeah. so I, I kind of feel like it's, and I'm starting to lean into this more is there's like the old school way of doing it. And I love tradition and I love ritual and I love things like that. And that, there are certain things that I just don't think are going to get us where we need to go. Mm. Does that make sense? So I'm leaning into more of this. How can we, how can, like the new school, what's the new school way of helping each other heal and healing the planet? Because this, the the natural world and how things are going and you seem like a smart guy and I'm sure everyone here listening, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So yeah, Mm -hmm. that's what I'm, that's what I'm really leaning into. What's the new school way we can do this? The new school way. Yeah. Totally. The new school yeah. way is taking the practices and modalities of the past that people I feel have graciously paved the way for us. Thankfully, yogis yeah. of the past take those practices 
and incorporate that into our life. But like you said, you don't have to do a thousand mantras. You don't have to go live in a cave. Unless you want to. Yeah. Like if, you if want that's to, what you, hey. Ruby, I'm all for it. But yeah. if you don't, that doesn't have to be required for there to be profound healing, mm-hmm. freedom, growth, change. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. I, and I should, I should make myself clear. Like I'm not, I don't want to sound disrespectful to any traditions or cultures or rituals or, or things that have helped us get as far as we have. Like I spent a lot of time in central South America, in the Amazon. And for me, that being around that kind of, I mean, to go to Guatemala, a place that has some of the like most indigenous, like highest number, I think maybe outside of China, more indigenous people than anywhere else in the world. And I'm like, I'm all in. I want to hang out with you people because Mm -hmm. I don't know shit. I've lost my way. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like I want to, I want to learn the ways in which you've existed for thousands of years, same language. You know what I mean? So it's, I have to be really mindful that what I'm saying in terms of this old school, new school, it's not that stuff. It's just certain tools that we've had available to us to help us have the change that we want in life and to experience profound healing and freedom and growth and all that stuff. Some of the tools, we need to update them. They need to be better. They're not working. If they were working, I don't think we would be um, experiencing life as, well, I don't know, maybe Again, it's that contrasting, like we need things to bit bounce off on. But yeah, I, I just want to kind of make myself clear. I'm not poo-pooing on tradition and culture and all that stuff. It's mm-hmm. there's we there's just room for better better systems or paths forward yeah, that are more respectful. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I think so, that's what we're doing right now. We're just figuring it out. I mean, all of these practices have been uncovered only because of the internet and people yeah, that yeah found them and are um, showcasing them for the world. But if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't know anything of yogic philosophy, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I would have had to go to India, just like people in the 60s did. So I think that um, integration is going on right now. We're slowly figuring it out how to um, bring the ancient practices into the modern life. And it's a little messy at this point. We're figuring it out, but I think we're getting Mm -hmm. there for sure. Thanks to people like you. Um, and mm-hmm. people, other people that I speak to all over the world, it's, it's actually like, when you sit down and think about it, it's wild that we can do this and I can speak to people that know a lot more than me and we share, we, we go back and forth and then people listen in and they get something from it, hopefully. And that's what it's all about. We're like, we're sharing, we're sharing mm-hmm. this knowledge that, um, has been given to us from ages past and figuring out what works and what doesn't work at this point. But just the fact that we're able to do this to me, it's like, wow, (laughs) hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, the the karma, the karma of my lifetime to be able to have this practice or practices uh, that lead to this wavelength we're talking about of the heart is Mm -hmm. a miracle to me because Mm -hmm. we could have easily been born someone back in, 14th century England didn't know how to read all you knew was like 20 people in your village mm-hmm. and you didn't know anything really you didn't know anything of the dharma you didn't know any meditation practices you were just they call it the dark ages for a reason right you were caught <laughs> in the darkness of you were caught in the side sort of like collective ignorance of society which maybe we did maybe we all lived through that who knows that's a whole different topic that's a whole different way <laughs> But what I'm saying is this lifetime is very special and uh, we're all, I feel as though learning as we go, you know, we're all like going through puberty. I like to say this is like humanity's puberty to become really who we're supposed Mm -hmm. to be. And what's puberty like for all of us? It's a little, it's a little messy. You feel things you never felt before. And it's kind of like, it's just like, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't feel gross. It's kind of gross. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly, but it's worth it in the end. Because I don't know become, what it was like for you, but it's, well, it's different. It's probably different, that's for sure. But I think all of us can agree it's uh, it's a little messy. It's definitely a little messy, but it's worth it because then you become a fully grown individual. And I think you mentioned this before. It's all about growth, right? We're all we're growing towards something. It seems like there's something going on here in this human experience. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's and something going on. Go ahead. Don't you think now? maybe more than ever the the intensity is so high in terms of 
accelerated growth, yep. accelerated, um, and growth is not always the feel good stuff. Growth is probably what we're seeing going on mm. in other parts of the world. So it's, there's, there's a lot of actually sent out a newsletter today talking about this exact thing. It's like, this is such a profound time and yep. to be alive on planet earth. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Feels like white knuckle. <laughs> yeah. Mm. May you be I don't know how it is times. for you. Yeah. yeah. People listening, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Definitely interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, it's definitely accelerated, like you said, but that is also puberty. If you look at it in terms of the metaphor of a child, we grow. And it's this gradual mm -hmm. process. We kind of grow, grow, grow. And then all of a sudden puberty hits and it's accelerated and you become an adult in what, a year, two years, something like that? <laughs> I don't even know. So that's, I, I really think, it, it may sound silly, but I really think this is like human humanity's puberty period in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this one. Um, if you said this is like a tough road, yesterday you were like, oh, I'm done. I don't know if oh, I want to so do this dumb. anymore, right? It can I be draining, like, right? Mm. A lot of energy involved. How would you describe the incentive to this path? You know, why even go down this? If it's like, if ignorance is bliss, why not stay in the ignorance is another way to ask. Like, why, why do you even yeah. want to tread this path? I don't actually think we have a choice anymore. Mm. I don't. My my experience, like when I read the stars, when I'm doing my cosmic antenna, you know, I'm, uh, I think we're at the point collectively where we're being ushered into a new consciousness. I actually don't think oh. we have the choice of yeah. staying stuck or, I mean, I, I just don't think it's, I don't, here's how I think of it. Everyone, we're getting on a plane. Everyone's getting on the plane. Some might be getting on in first class, mm. right? Some might be getting on whatever the next class, and then some might be getting on very last, but like everyone is getting on the damn plane. <laughs> and that plane is, it is, and it may not seem like it. It may not look like it, and it may not feel like it, but it it seems to be just that plane is, is aimed towards higher consciousness, and mm. things have to get really bad before they get better. And so... You know, I think this stay asleep and it's just easier. I don't actually think it's a choice. I don't think it's a choice anymore. And so no. it's like, do you want to get on the plane in first class or do you want to get like get forced on? Like the yeah. plane's leaving, you have to get on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait. It's like, yep. pick your path. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, I don't know. I, I just, <sighs> Yeah, it's. I've traveled some and seen some of the world, not not a lot of it, but I just I I I don't know. I think I don't know that anyone would really choose this path. It's not it's not always a comfortable path, but the rewards and the riches that can be experienced. And I'm not talking about stuff at all. I'm, I'm not talking about like manifest. Eight, I'm not talking about any of that. Like what I was gonna say is like get rich and millions of dollars. I mean, sure, who doesn't want a million bucks, but more than a million. Anyway, I think the richness that we can experience by being in more, com like in a deeper conversation with life, with the universe, with ourself, yeah. right? Like we're, when we're in rapport with the thing that created us, mm -hmm. if I have to get on the path and that path has like brambles and branches and rocks I'm going to trip over, I'll take that path any day. Yep. If it means that I get to have a better, deeper relationship with what I call the creative force, <laughs> come on, what else? What am I going to watch Netflix for the rest of my life? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sleep may. is not an option yeah. for me. Yeah. That's very well said. Yeah. And I think that's really what it's all about here. Becoming in touch with what created us forming a relationship friend gary like what else is there than being having a relationship with the force that keeps this whole thing do you know what i mean yeah. what keeps planets aligned why what keeps 
Why do mm-hmm. babies grow nine months and not 12 or 20? You know what I mean? Like what grows fingernails and eyeballs yeah. and toenails? And yes. The Tao. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the force. Mm-hmm. The force. Yeah. It's so major. It's so major. Yeah. <laughs> so I've done, I, I don't know how much more time. I've done 15 five day med- meditation retreats, like sitting. And there was one in particular where I had this crazy experience where I went off into the void, the space, like outside Mm. of this. I've never had an experience like this. I think I'm a pretty grounded person. I've done psychedelics and all that sort of shit, but I just through meditation went into some other, and it was the first time in my life as an adult that I felt this creational force in a way that I've actually never felt it. I don't even know. I mean, I feel it like when I'm out hiking or swimming or fishing or something like that, but this was like, holy wow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I think to try and answer your question, you know, why pick this path? Because there's so much available. There's so much more available. Yeah. No limits. We talked about limits before of the mind and, Mind is tricky. The mind is definitely tricky. Mind is tricky. (laughs) (laughs) It's smart, but it's tricky. Yeah. And we have to trick it. That's the thing. It's like we have to Mm -hmm. use its own trickery against itself to be able to come in touch with this force. Mm -hmm. And that force, I mean, it lives in every single heart. Now, some may push back and be like, but what about war? And what about all this stuff? And like, that's also the force. Mm-hmm. I think that's a whole other conversation, but really um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, there really is the force within all of this. The way the Tao, everything, everything that moves has some sort of innate intelligence. Mm-hmm. And like you said, when you go out into nature, mm-hmm. it's so easy to see, right? And we're so right. egocentric to think we're not part of that. That's what the mind tells us. The mind will say, oh, you're you're human. You got your human stuff. That's nature. I think, no, we are nature. That's mm-hmm. part of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's so simple. Yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. And that will guide us through life. That force, you could say God. God will guide you. Your higher self will guide you through all endeavors. Through all endeavors, if you become in touch with it. Mm-hmm. It's all up to us. And I think that's what's happening now, collectively. This growth that we're talking about is growing toward a collective understanding of the force and that we are all part of the force. Here's what I, I would say in closing. I'm, I'm, I'm curious what you think that mm-hmm. what's, again, I'm just reading, I'm just reading the stars. And I, I do that all, every, anyway. Yeah. There seems to be this very interesting invitation where we can now reclaim this divinity. Call it God, Mm -hmm. call it Jesus, call it Buddha, call it whatever you want to call it. But it's it's the force that now seems to be a pretty auspicious, possibly needed time for us to reclaim that divinity. And that when when we're talking about this heart intelligence. That's part of it. Like reclaim your divinity, reclaim the divinity that you already are. It's been there the whole time. Mm -hmm. If you were unaware of it, well, maybe this will help you be aware of it now. Like it's already Mm -hmm. within you. We just have to reaccess that. Hence the heart forward mindfulness piece that, yeah, it's so important right now, man. It's so important because this thing, the mind, mm -mm. yeah, Mm -mm. nope. (laughs) <laughs> respect the mind change the mind but not letting that lead no it only goes so far you can't intellectualize the force <laughs> yeah well the yeah. force isn't logical do you know what I mean? like yeah. think of time the miracles that you've experienced in your life where you've been turned right and you have this thing you, you know what i mean like i think the force is not logical it's not linear yeah which is freaky <laughs> yeah yeah, it's not linear. Yeah, It's not linear. How could it be? If it always was, always is, and always will be, linear means two points from here to there. There are new, mm-hmm. no two points in this essence that we're talking about. So there's no way that it could be linear. Mm-hmm. Infinity is not linear. Yeah, Here we go again. This is good. 
<laughs> casual talk on a <laughs> on a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. All you got to do is remember. That's it. All you got to do is remember. Um, every teaching I say is a reminder for us, or an opportunity to remember this wavelength and this essence that we're talking about. So hopefully, hopefully, if you listen this long, uh, it served as a reminder to you. It served as a reminder to me, at least. <laughs> That's why I do these things. I come on here with wise people like you, and I remember truly what life is all about. Um, yeah. So I don't have anything else to say. I think that's a wonderful note to wrap this up at. Do you have anything else you want to get off your chest? I would say last thing. It's, uh, I think it's all within. Mm -hmm. The thing that this, this force, this magical, it's, it lives within. It's yeah. not outside. Mm -hmm. So no, but thank you so much for such a deep conversation. Of course. Of I course. appreciate it. I thank you for coming on here. I appreciate your, um, your spirit. Just overall, you're a very crazy. bright energy. <laughs> she can be crazy. <laughs> it's a good crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for coming on here. And thank you for anybody that listened this long. I wish you all the best, Ashley. Um, keep doing your thing. And that's it. Peace and love to you. And peace and love to anybody that listens. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.